Hello everyone, and welcome to The Mortuary. I am The Mortician. And I apologize for being late on the video today, but um, I've had quite a hectic week. Um, a lot of stuff has been going on. I actually got a new mouse because my old one was busted, which is part of the reason why this video is late. I was supposed to edit this on Sunday and put this together on Sunday, but I really couldn't. So I'm just going to use my cell phone uh, stuff for now, the camera and whatnot, and I apologize for the fan. So let's get right this started. The Flea Market Extravaganza Part 3, the movies. Um, so yeah, first movie we have here is House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price. Um, this is actually a really awesome movie. I've never seen the remake, so I can't compare the two. But I really, really enjoy this movie. Um, I have to say before I go into the details of the movie, this movie looks exceptionally good. Like, for being as old as it is, it looks super crystal clear on my TV. I was absolutely blown away with the uh, how it transferred to a bigger TV. Absolutely amazing. Basically, there's this guy that's holding a party at a house that's supposedly haunted by, you know, evil spirits. Um, and there's this whole thing about, like, there's this whole subplot. I wouldn't say subplot. It is the plot. About how, like, um, I, I don't want to give it away. I mean, it's a, it's a, when this movie came out, like 1953 or something, it's old. So basically, he goes to this, to, to this house, that whole house locks down, and everyone has to stay in there until the morning. But there's this whole murder plot going on, like, uh, you know, there's someone trying to kill other people in there. Um, inside the house and it's really really awesome and interesting it has an amazing twist at the end which I really really enjoy um, so yeah awesome which I picked up I actually have three well three DVDs with Vincent Price on them but there's actually like five Vincent Price films and all uh, next we have Predator 2 which uh, I haven't watched but I know I think I know enough about it um, to uh, talk about it, basically, this is this takes place after the first one, and this actually takes place uh, in a city. Um, and supposedly, this one is really, really good as well. I, I was always I was always told to stay away from these, but apparently, this one's really good. Um, I didn't watch it because I didn't have enough time to watch it because I just I, like I said, I've had a lot of problems I've been working through. So yeah, but. Um, seems good enough. I mean, this isn't really a review series, it's just showing what you got, what I got anyway, so. But this was like two bucks. Actually, I think I paid a dollar for this one. Um, next is another film I haven't watched because I'm saving it for Halloween. Um, and that is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, this is actually Francis Ford Coppola's film. Which, um, if you're not familiar with Francis Ford Coppola, he was the one who did The Godfather Part 1 and 2. Ed? He might have made that Diarrhea Sunday that was Godfather Part 3, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, I remember this movie being really, really popular when I was younger. Um, practically every time I walked into someone's house back when this movie came out, um, it was on the TV somewhere. Um, it was really, really popular and really, really awesome, apparently. I've only caught snippets here and there of this film, so I don't know much about it. Which is why I'm saving it for Halloween. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch the Bela Lugosi, the 1931 Dracula, which I've already seen. And I'm going to watch the Hammer Dracula films with Christopher Lee, Sir Christopher Lee. So I'll have a Dracula marathon of watching those things. So that's why I'm holding off. Just so that way, this will be like the icing on that Dracula cake. Now this is also a dollar, I think. <sighs> Next we have the Double Packs, which I saved for last for a reason. Because there's two and one. Um, so first we have uh, the Haunted Palace, which uh, this is actually an interesting thing because it's actually based on a poem by Edgar Allan Poe. I don't remember what poem it was, uh, but it's actually an interesting movie about a guy who inherits um, a, a mansion from his, I guess, great uncle or whatever, uh, 110 years in the future or something like that, and like. What ends up happening is that he gets possessed by his uncle or whatever. It's actually really, really cool. It might have actually been his grandfather, um, but it's a really, really cool film. Um, it once again shot really well, and Vincent Price does an amazing job. I don't think I've seen anything Vincent Price like. I've never seen Vincent Price in a bad role yet. Like every film I've seen him in, he's amazing. Um, and this is no, this is no exception. This is awesome. This is a really, really awesome film. 
So the other one on here is the Tower of London, which uh, this was the this was kind of like the one I had no idea if I was gonna like it or not. I actually watched this yesterday, and turns out I really did like it. Um, it's it, it's about um, I don't know if it was actually King uh, King Richard and well the Tower of London. Basically, there's this guy um, who's trying to to basically become the king of England. So uh, his brother King Edward dies. Um, he stabs his other brother because he was going to be protector of the realm, which basically he would instruct the, 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 the actual heirs to the throne on how to be kingly or whatever. And basically it's a whole murder plot thing. It's done, once again, really well, shot really well. And for being a double pack, these movies look amazing on an HDTV. Like, I was absolutely shocked how good they look. Um, done really, really well. And... It's just such a good film, too. Um, there's a lot of silly hats, though, which is, like, it takes away from the suspense and thrills. But um, it's not a bad film. It's actually, it's like, if I had to explain it, it's the perfect blend between, like, comedy and thriller horror stuff. I really, really enjoyed both of these films. Whew. Next, we have another double pack. Um... And that is The Fall of the House of Usher, which is one of my favorite Edgar Allan Poe stories, and The Pit and the Pendulum. Um, now, basically, the problem I had with both of these films is that, for whatever reason, they both felt like, when they were starting, they both felt like they were going to be The Fall of the House of Usher. Like, when I, the first one I actually watched was Pit and the Pendulum, and when it started out, I was like, this seems eerily similar to um, Fall of the House of Usher, and they do kind of have the same plot line. I think it's just for the sake of the movies, because um, I remember in the actual story of the Pit and the Pendulum, the, the, the main character's talking about how he's got carted away by the Inquisition. But um, in this film, it's actually a dude who inherited, once again, inherited this house, and his father um, you know, basically has a torture chamber in the cellar and whatnot, and it, it's a very different take on the pen and the pendulum. Um, there are a lot of differences between these two, but actually, they're actually, it's actually not that bad. It's actually a really good film. Once again, shot really well. There's some great uh, use of color, some great costume design and whatnot. Really, really awesome. Um, and of course, it's Vincent Price, so like everything's awesome about Vincent Price. Um, the Fall of the House of Usher is actually different as well, in the fact that it has, once again, a really unique twist that the original doesn't have, which works really well, for, in, which works in favor of the film, and really makes it just that much more enjoyable. So, honestly, I was very, very happy with both of these films, despite them being two of probably my favorite um, Edgar Allan Poe stories other than The Angel of the Odd, because I love that. I love that story a lot. Um, but these are probably two of my favorites, so I'm glad to see these done. Um, and I'm glad that there's actually a unique take. Um, but I, I, I guess I should say I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't just go full-fledged try to do the story. Because it's not like it's a Harry Potter book or something. Like, it, these are short stories. These are maybe like 20, 25 pages or maybe 30 or somewhere around there. They're not that long. So... Yeah, but um, great either way. Um, once again, all of these things were probably picked up for like 30 or 35 bucks. Everything from this flea market extravaganza. Uh, but that wraps up this flea market extravaganza. Please tell me what you guys think, because I actually had fun doing these videos. I really, really enjoy um, talking about talk, talking about these deals, because basically, I feel like there's some weird stigma about flea markets for whatever reason. Like, people are afraid to go there. Um, but once again, everything I got works, and everything I got is pretty fucking awesome. Like, screaming deals, like two bucks. Like, for these double packs, these are like two bucks. And I got four films, and, and like, they're an hour and 20 minutes each. So that's a lot of content for four dollars. Um, so please, if you've gone to the flea market recently, I don't care if it's games, movies, lamps, whatever, tell me what you guys got at a flea market. Tell me what your favorite things you've picked up at flea markets before. And if you've never been to a flea market, and maybe you've been to a thrift store, tell me your favorite findings at a thrift store. So thank you guys for watching. Mortician, peace out. I apologize for the messaging, because my cousin enjoys sending me six messages at once instead of just one solid message. And once again, I apologize for the fan noise.